So uh, I've been asked to um, uh, do a video um, talking about uh, uh, management, uh, managing people, uh, managing uh, people and processes. Now, I always um, shudder when I hear the word uh, leader and leading and management um, because it's very um, uh, subjective and it can be measured in very many different ways. And uh, in, a, in a business context, um, uh, many people, many CEOs are, are judged, are viewed um, well, their management is judged uh, purely based on profit margins and uh, performance of the company. And normally, shareholders are the people that will issue this, uh, you know, this comment. They are a good manager. Um, they manage people. They, they manage the company very well, you know, because that um, they've made a load of profit. Um, the truth might be for that individual is that. You know, they, uh, they treat everyone like a slave. They're very autocratic. They behave, they run the company like a dictatorship. And, uh, but, and yet um, people, you know, work hard out of fear. And sure enough, the product has sold, they've made money. And, uh, and that CEO or leader or, ma or manager, you know, is congratulated. And uh, you know, um, often the employees really don't see the, the manager or the CEO as a hero or a good manager, yeah, you know, but they're, they're normally in a context where they can't speak their mind. And if they did, you know, they might lose their job. So, yeah, it's very interesting. And, and then you might have someone who would be viewed as a great manager um, because they're, the employees like the manager. Uh, other executives of the company like the manager, like the leader, and uh, everyone has a great word to say about this manager. But this manager is responsible for P&L, profit and loss, and uh, and in the period, um, you know that this reference is being made um, that they own or you know they're the manager of a department that's made no money or, or a loss. And, uh, and then someone takes a view that they are a bad manager because they've made no money. So it's your measurement measure, matrices or, it's, or your measurement metric or you know, how you're measuring these things that, that's highly um, debatable and uh, you know, provides the context in which you are measuring uh, you know, the word management. Um, so you know leadership and management. How on earth do I uh, um, do I talk about this? So it's a tricky one uh, because it's very subjective. Uh, right. Let me start off with the. Uh, I know. I'll start off with the definition of abuse. Now, uh, abuse is where a person uses another person to meet their own needs without taking that person's need into account um, or into their highest consideration. Um, so, so we have a definition of abuse. Now, if you think about it, um, uh, I think we all have a lot of abusive uh, relationships with other people because how many times do we use somebody else to meet our own needs? Um, so if you're applying the definition of abuse, yeah, we probably... Um, you know, we, we all, uh, we're all a little bit abusive. Uh, but, uh, okay, in the context of, uh, of business, um, uh, uh, well, we normally work for money. Um, so there is a, there's a contract in place. Uh, so a person pays someone an amount of money and that individual um, for that payment uh, provides their labor. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the, the abuse definition applies, but there is consideration because the person is receiving money for it. And so, um, uh, you know, contract law applies, uh, something is offered and something is remunerated, uh, something's paid for, and that's how it works. Um, so, so, so that is how you motivate someone, um, uh, and none of that um, uh, is leadership or management. You know, it's just 
um, uh, here is some cash, do something that I tell you to do. And, uh, you know, and that's management and, and, and it's a form of leadership. And uh, sometimes it might be really good because you, know, you simply pay someone to lift a heavy weight or, or drive a car from A to B and they do it. And uh, yeah, and, and um, you know, that, that has worked very well with very little management or leadership. But the view could be that you know, the, it was managed very well. Right, so let's, let's talk about leadership and management in a business context. Ooh, so, so you've heard this phrase, uh, um, uh, vision management or vision holder. Now, the, uh, vision holding is normally performed by the CEO or the executives of a company, um, but it's normally provided by a person um, or if it's not a person, it's clearly stated that there are you know, three people and uh, this is the scope of their responsibility. But normally, the vision holder of a company is a single person. It's normally the chief executive officer. And that word executive means that they have executive function, which means that they are a decision maker and they have responsibility. And so that's why the word executive um, features in top roles inside a, um, an organization. And um, from a legal point of view, it means that you're responsible and, and, you, and you might get it in the neck if you break the law. And, uh, but normally the, the CEO is the vision holder and, he, and, and how he views the world and how he uh, views management and leadership and how he views the industry, you know, the, is what you're paying for. It's what the shareholders are paying for because that individual is supposed to have an understanding of, of uh, running businesses, the economy and uh, managing uh, personnel, human resources and resources that the company owns and has access to. And, uh, and, and if that CEO um, has work experience that makes him good at what he's doing and he has a track record, he'll be appointed and, and then the performance of the company is measured. It's not been, again, it's normally measured on profit. Um, but um, you can take a view if they're good or not. I, I, and once again, um, you know, when I talk about leadership and management, I, I always think of Steve Jobs, uh, Elon Musk, Alan Sugar, and Richard Branson in particular, uh, because uh, these chaps um, I often reference. And uh, actually, I, I've never met um, any of them, I don't think. Uh, uh, no, I haven't. Uh, I haven't personally met them. I was just thinking, have I, uh, you know, been to a, uh, a meeting or, or seen them deliver um, a speech? Some no, I haven't. Uh, no. So, um, but I make reference to these guys based on what I've been subject to and what I've read about them. Uh, but uh, each of them has slightly different management styles, and uh, their. Um, the way that they manage people um, has been different. And, uh, but you could argue that those four people are very good at what they do. Um, as it happens, I like all four. Um, I think uh, combined you would have the perfect CEO because you'd be covering all the bases. You'd be demonstrating ability to uh, uh, hold a vision. You'd be demonstrating um, an ability to understand a marketplace and um, how to manage and create new ideas if they don't all belong to you. Um, but you'd be able to demonstrate successful mechanisms that you've employed in managing the business. In fact, they'd be a great combination. So I'm, I'm going to go through that again, actually. So we have Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, Richard Branson and Alan Sugar. Uh, what an A team that would be! Imagine a company. Well, actually, they probably wouldn't want one wouldn't want to work together um, because they're they're very good at you know running their own you know kingdom. So that's okay. But I think looking at those four people, you know, if you were a a business student and um, you fancied looking at 
you know, what makes a good business leader. Those four guys, um, reading everything that they've said and, uh, and listening to everything that they've said and trying to emulate them would be a jolly good start. Actually, uh, when you emulate, yeah, yeah that, that can be dangerous because when you try to copy someone, if that skill set or ability is not actually in you, inherent in you, um, when you try and copy um, a style, it, you know, it can look very phony and backfire. So I don't always say emulate, uh, copy something. But, but you need to understand it, be aware of it and think about it. And then um, try and emulate it with your own signature, your own style. Uh, business is tough, it's very hard and uh, it's very unforgiven, uh, unforgiving, especially around management styles. So, you know, never try to copy a management style, try to develop your own management style in particular. Um, but anyway, I've just mentioned um, Elon Musk, Alan Sugar, Richard Branson and Steve Jobs. Um, and I, it made me think let me think of someone who's perhaps not very good at managing that we are aware of. Uh, you know, just then Mark Zuckerberg sprung to mind and um, arguably um, you can't say that he's not a successful leader on management because the p l of his company, uh, the value of his company in you know, who would discredit, would prove that. So you can't say that he's a bad manager or leader. Um, uh, although, um, you know, I think uh, it would be very interesting to get some credible reference there. Um, I am aware of, uh, of what people who have worked for him have said when they've left. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's not all favourable. I, I am sure there are some people that, that say very positive things about him. Yeah, but again, it depends, you know, how you want to, you know, skin the cat, how, how you, you know, your, it depends on your perspective and it depends on what point you're making and what uh, reference matrices you're using, you know, to offer that opinion or judgment. Um, but he's an interesting character. Um, I'm not sure about, uh, about Facebook's future. Um, um, hang on, is it called Meta? Uh, and Facebook is a brand name. Uh, Facebook has to be a brand name and, and Meta is the company. Um, uh, whenever companies change their name, um, uh, uh, historically, no, that, I mean, there are some successes. There are some genuine business needs to change names. But it's one of those things that I've never favoured because so much branding equity and so much value is, is held by a brand name. And when you change that brand name, it does confuse your, your customers and it, can, and it can confuse the industry. And it's always riddled with um, uh, skepticism because people think you're trying to wriggle out of something or possibly wriggle out of something, some liability in the future. So rebranding, unless it is incredibly clear why you're doing it and there are some other you know, obvious reasons why you're doing it, um, it's a little fraught with danger. Although I do like the, 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 the branding of Meta. I think that's not a bad name actually. And uh, I quite like the logo. It's like an uh, infinity. I think that's nice. And, uh, and as I understand it, I think he's heading into the direction of committing, you know, Facebook's resources, Meta's resources into this metaverse thing. Ah, metaverse, right. It's just prompted me to talk about, about that for a moment because just recently I, I, I keep being asked about that as well. And uh, I forgot to mention NFTs. Um, <laughs> I'll have to come back to NFTs. Um, okay, um, so let's go to the metaverse. Now, so what the metaverse is, it's basically digitally representing everything in the real world into an artificial world. Um, so you could stick this room into the metaverse and 
you can digitally synthesize everything about this uh, room and me inside it and uh, all the tangible things that are here you can synthesize them in a 3d digital world and that's basically the metaverse and, uh, and once again i thought to myself why the heck do i want to be digitized in a digitized room and interact digitally with everything when I can't be bothered to do that. I'm not really interested in doing that. Although, you know, for a moment it might be interesting, but I can't see the draw. Um, I, uh, I'm not discounting the technology and the usefulness of the metaverse because things like training, for example, training pilots and uh, uh, training astronauts and uh, training people that work in hostile conditions, and uh, you know the metaverse is a great training aid so i can see its application being super there also obviously gaming um, right now gaming gaming is very much in 2d with a um, a 3d aesthetic and so sticking that game into a 3d environment you know that's going to work i, I can see that but for me you know, the gaming audience is what it is. It, you know, it's a rough percentage of, of young adults. And so I can see the metaverse um, uh, le uh, leaning to, I, I can see the gaming community heading over to the metaverse and you know, yeah, it's gonna work great in the gaming um, uh, space. But for the rest of us, I imagine that we'll all try it and you know within half an hour either your eyes will hurt or you'll be frustrated <laughs> or the headset will fall off actually i've just mentioned eyes hurting i can see some real health issues here possibly with wearing you know a headset that's constantly beaming light into the back of your eye uh, you know so this is going to need to be understood and thought about and i'm quite sure they have thought about it and these headsets are going to be made as safe as they possibly can be um, but the, my gut feeling is um, will everybody want to be in the metaverse as i think zuckerberg thinks that they might be and i don't think that they will i think it will be intriguing for a while uh, we'll all try it but i think the limits of it Will be um, uh, will be reached uh, very quickly, and I think what will be left is the gaming community that want to game in in a three D in a, in a very immersive environment. Um, I think the technology will continue to get better and lend itself very well to uh, commercial use. Uh, anything around um, simulate simulations that train people to do their job in hostile environments, that sort of thing is going to be great. Uh, but instead of using Facebook as we do today, uh, will we all plug into the metaverse? I don't know. I'm not completely buying it. Um, yes, well, yes, well, we may all try it. But uh, yeah, I'm not buying it at all. I'm really not. Anyway, um, uh, so we got on to the metaverse from a, a discussion about leadership. Oh gosh, so I do apologize. I think when I've uh, finished this video, I'm going to have to um, name it something that, um, you know, something other than leadership and management. And uh, so let me try and get to leadership and management. Actually, Zuckerberg could be viewed as a very good vision holder because he is leading the way with this uh, metaverse. And he's really pushing it and so you can't hold that against him because he is committed to this and you know it is a big bet he's got the money the resources you know at his disposal at his disposal to execute this thing and yes i believe he is going to do it and it's going to be very interesting um, so i think we can say you know zuckerberg has has proved himself and um in, and uh, depending on how you want to measure him as a as a leader um, or, or a manager, you have to say he's good at that. Uh, generally speaking, anyway, 
back to leadership and management. So in my experience and in many other people's experience, we know that managing people is hard. It's, it's really hard um, because it's very complicated and you have to deal with a lot of dynamics. Uh, there's a lot of psychology involved um, that's not obvious um, that people, you know, when you are a young manager, don't really talk about. Uh, they talk about uh, objectives being delivered. And, um, and that's actually a way I like to manage and uh, it's how I manage myself. I, 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 I'm, I think more about the objective and the, the deliverable being delivered rather than you know, being nice to people. And yeah, um, uh, but managing people, you know, the reason it's complicated is because, you know, do you need to be friends with people that you are responsible for, that you are managing? Uh, do you uh, are you responsible for their well-being and and, uh, and and welfare to a degree? Yes, you are because you're paying them and you have to provide safe working conditions. Um, but but what about you know all the time that managers spend with people and you know that close proximity and management and business relationship you know ends up in you know you have to have a relationship to varying degrees with people. And, uh, you know, and we all go to work for many hours a day. So these things are very important because they shape and modify a person's psyche in long term. And uh, they shape and modify behavior. Uh, they shape and modify behavioral characteristics and thought processes. So this stuff gets very deep. Um, and uh, again, it's why I like to keep everything at a very top level, a very a very tangible level. So I always talk about deliverables and uh, and deliver and objectives, and I always reference uh, you know these management styles and behaviours, and I, I always prefix um, when I'm chatting with people the context we're in, and that is business, and uh, and we're there not to be friends with each other, but to actually get some work done and get some uh, objectives delivered. <laughs> That's how I get around it. Um, I, um, I don't, you know, if we, uh, I mean, this is why it's tough for HR. Um, uh, often HR, uh, when they talk about the complexity of their role in an organization, it's way more complex than, than people realize because they have to fulfill legal uh, um, objectives and uh, they have to employ health and safety strategies, they have to uh, um, employment strategies, they have to uh, be aware of risks and health risks and mental health and you name it, uh, you know, diversity and inclusion. You know, it is a minefield, especially when the organization gets bigger and bigger. Um, so much stuff has to be delivered. And, uh, you know, I feel for employers sometimes because this is very expensive management and it's very ex expensive stuff um, to satisfy uh, because you have to employ people that are specialists in this stuff. And it's very costly. It's very, it's very administrative intensive as well because you have to spend a lot of time thinking about it. Anyway, management of people. I think I'm going to conclude in this video that managing people is very difficult. It's very complicated and depending on the context, it's very hard to make judgments and plan for it. But essentially, it has to be done very well. And uh, clarity of description, clarity of context and clarity of objectives um, help greatly. And on that sentence, I think I'm going to end this video here um, because, you know, I think it's a wide discussion. I, I'm going to come back to it. So um, I hope it's been of some use. Um, I hope it's uh, been informative uh, to a degree. And uh, yes, um, I'll, I'll post the video anyway. And uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, once again, I hope everyone is well and, um, you know, if you're on a holiday or 
um, you're watching this video uh, to put you to sleep. I hope you, <laughs> I hope you sleep well. And, uh, and no doubt we'll speak again. And everyone have a good day.